Um, Shutter Club. Uh, we we've been trying we've been trying to do this top ten Shutter thing for like the last three weeks, but every time we can fuck it up. This it's time. cursed. Uh, I keep fucking it up. I keep it's cursed. my fault, and it God, is Dan's fault. It's not. It's not my fault. It's a curse. It's Just Dan's like, fault. You know, it should be the next episode of Cursed Films. Yeah, Cursed Films Shutter Club reviews top ten Shutter. Yeah. Uh, uh, is that fact or crap? I don't know. Um, so my top ten. So we're doing a top ten. Each one of us is going to pick three, and then uh, we're all going to kind of go in on the tenth one, which um, I, I kind of already have an idea of what I'm going to say for that one. Okay. Uh, but my top choice of any movie ever made, um, not necessarily my favorite movie, but the movie that I always return to and can watch a billion times is Don Coscarelli's 1979 surreal masterpiece, Phantasm about a, um, a mortuary attendant who uh, crushes dead bodies down into dwarves, resurrects them and transports them to another world to act as slaves. Uh, a 13 year old boy who discovers the plot and um, uh, it just keeps fucking up his shit. He just won't leave him alone. And um, you know, it's got the greatest score ever recorded for a movie. Um, I've been trying to emulate that score for the better part of my synthesizer career, which is only two years now, but, yeah. um, uh, and that's, it's just, uh, for, for sheer cinematic, pure enjoyment. I don't think I've ever experienced anything quite as great as it. There was a, my first screening of it was like a midnight showing on channel 12 or something. And, uh, I was at my cousin's house. There was a window, a wall sized window, or a wall size, yeah, a wall sized uh, glass sliding door that overlook a, 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 a cornfield. And um, my uncle, knowing I was watching this movie, came up and pounded on the door and said, Boy! <laughs> and, um, cool. Yeah, and it's been stuck with me ever since. And I just, I just fucking love this movie. Phantasm Shutter Club, watch it right now. Uh, my first pick for. The, my top three shutter is going to be Mandy. Yay! Uh, which, yes, excellent is film. A um, a completely reality distorted, fucked up acid trip from hell that will make you feel like you're having the best sex in the world as well as the worst sex in the world. <laughs> You know, at the same time and 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 is not using the right kind of lube, but using lube, but she's not the right kind. And uh, so um, so this film grabs a hold of your brain. It grabs a hold of your head and tears out your brain and says, <laughs> and then puts it back in and says, now watch this film. Yeah. It is a story of revenge, sweet, sweet revenge, as well as love and compassion and discompassion and um, religious cults and, and, and biker um, Shenanigans. Uh, monsters that are all screwed up. And this cultist who has a, a, a hold on his people and they all go and he has to have her and he wants her, but he can't and she doesn't like him. And so she takes, he takes her and then makes the husband watch because of her spurning that she is murdered in a very bad way. I'll just say it's horrible. I'm not gonna say what it is. <laughs> But, um, but it's I fucking say it's, horrible. It's terrible. It's the worst possible death that you could witness your <laughs> significant other going through, pretty much. And then, and then they leave him for dead. And then he 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 just 
gets out of it. He gets out of it from his rage and his, his torment of what happened. And he, and he goes after them. But first he has to go and get his weapons that was being held by his friend. And he gets his weapons. He forges this amazing ax and goes out after them. <laughs> You're exact making this, this really revenge. traumatic film sound really fun. <laughs> yeah, and exacts his revenge and then kind of goes a little nuts, feels a little content, but realizes that it didn't bring her back. There's a weird moment in that film where he is having a long, long fight scene with a demon biker with a porn scene playing in the background. And all I can think is, I've met the girl in that porn scene. That's <laughs> a big fucking chuckle out of this particular moment. Only you, Dave. <laughs> only you. Only you. Uh, great, well, that's, great. That's, that's oh. my first pick for, uh, for Shuffle. So th it's, it's definitely worthy. It's, it, we did a full length review on it. Yeah, there's, it yeah we've done a full length review. It is, and, okay. All you have to say right now is that Panos Cosmatos has released a film and fuck you. I, I will walk over your body to go fucking see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will thread Adidas into your goddamn back to go see another Panos Cosmatos. <laughs> Good to know. Well, I, I was on the fence about Beyond the Black Rainbow, but I, I agree with Mandy. Yes, Mandy. Dave? So my Dave. first pick is actually going to be a film called The Void, which is a wonderful piece of um, cosmic horror. It starts off with uh, people being killed in a farmhouse, members of a cult. And then uh, one of the members of the cult who is pregnant winds up in a hospital. And after that, shit gets weird. Things go strange. It is kind of like a mixture of a H.P. Lovecraft, Robert Block story mixed with hefty amounts of like Delta Green elements. Um, it is a well put together, remarkably well structured film. It has cosmic horror, but yet feels claustrophobic at the same time. It's an incredible piece of work. The shooting is amazing. The acting works well. No real big name actors in it, but that's okay because in this case, it's a film where you don't know what's going to happen at any given moment. And every time it gives you an opportunity to head off in a different direction, fuck yeah, it goes there. Mythos so, approved? Mythos approved. Mythos approved. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, um, totally worth checking out. It's one of those films where you should definitely wait till night, turn off all the lights in your house, then find somebody who really makes you feel better about the world and then by the end of it you'll be sitting there looking at them like you're a mythos demon aren't you it's that <laughs> good of a film my next pick is um one of my other favorite filmmakers as far as horror goes um uh, everybody else will say suspiria or tenebrae which are great films but for my money, the best Dario Argento flick is from 1985. It's called Phenomena. It was also known as, uh, it was also known under the title Creepers, if you saw it on VHS back in the day. Um, the VHS, the VHS version was like a lot shorter. It was like 85 minutes. The, the, the actual Phenomena cut is like 116 or something like that. Anyway. Anyway, so it's about this, it's about, it's Jennifer Connelly is this 14-year-old uh, psychic who's uh, off at school with a bunch of girls and there's a bunch of, of uh, murders happening, like women getting decapitated, things like that. And um, she gets embroiled in the investigation with Donald Pleasant, who is an ent entomologist, a, a bug, a, an insect expert. And he has this theory about her ability to communicate with insects and how that will intersect with her ability to track the killer. And it's visually exciting. It's got a great score by Iron Maiden and all kinds of heavy metal bands. It's just pure. Um, it's 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 almost seventies and eighties mushed together. It's the perfect mix. It's um, and uh, there's no excuse for a gore hound not to check it out. It's one of the most fun, uh, most interesting. It's got a great score by Claudio Simonetti from Goblin. Um, just check that one out, man. I think I think most of you'll dig it. Cool. Uh, my second pick for Shutter 
is Mayhem. It is yes. the story of uh, a, a pandemic. Move the microphone closer to your face. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, thank you. Your it face is closer to the microphone. <laughs> Mayhem. Uh, <laughs> which is the story of a uh, of a pandemic style situation going on in the world, but it's really cool because it's a pandemic that kind of inflicts you with if you saw Twenty Eight Days Later um, with the rage virus causes you to act with inhibition and do all the things that that you would do if no one was watching and there were no repercussions it, it, it's basically about these this 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 guy who discovers that the company is uh screwing a client she's this really pretty girl and he's like okay well we're, why don't we do something about this they end up getting the rage virus as well and they work their way to the top of this high rise to exact revenge I love revenge flicks. Can you tell? Anyway, this movie is full of gore, full of uh, uh, violence and and uh, aggression. Humor, and humor, tons of humor as well. Um, the uh, the main actor was in uh, 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 Walking Dead, and the girl, she she's fabulous. So anyway, mayhem. Tomorrow weeping. Ah yes, thank you. Beautiful. Very, uh, I, I really like that one. I think everybody should check it out. Oh, God, that is a great, great film. Look right inside of this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dave. Dave. Uh, my next choice is uh, Dead Wax, which is a series on Shudder. Um, it's, I think it's about eight episodes long, but if you sit and watch every episode, it actually, in terms of time, works out to being a feature-length film. Um, the idea is it's kind of similar to Ringu and also um, similar to uh, shit. Oh, it'll come to me, but you know, cigarette we're, burns. Yeah, cigarette burns is another one that comes to mind. Basically, it's about the, an obsessive quest to find a piece of media that is unique and could possibly kill you. But for those of us who love music and love unique media, it's like sitting there and putting catnip in front of a cat. You can drag that fucker all over the place. You can drag it across <laughs> 16 stories worth of broken glass and that cat will follow you. <laughs> and Ed Something Wax tells me you've tried this, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> this is a I remarkably specific a metaphor. <laughs> I've got a few humans I would, but not a cat. <laughs> um, but it's like seriously... The first thing that I noticed is that it's absolutely audiophile porn. Um, the opening scene has a stereo system that, for those of us who are like hardcore audiophiles, are going, that's about $300,000 worth of stereo this guy is putting his record on. Um, and the entire notion is that it's about the obsession of finding the next thing. It's about finding, like, the main character is a woman who hunts down rare and obscure records. The first scene you see her in, she's breaking into somebody's house to steal a punk rock seven inch for a client. And there's like a hundred copies in the world and she gets paid a lot of money to do it. Um, and it's about that notion of obsession. What would you do to find that one song? What would you do to find that one movie? What would you do to find the thing that absolutely takes the world and turns it on its goddamn head? And that is what this film is, this whole thing is about. You and doesn't can sit it... down on Shudder and watch it, all eight episodes, and you'll have spent as much time as you would watching a feature-length film. Because the eight episodes range between eight minutes to 15 minutes long, so it's about an hour and a half until. Um, can't recommend it enough. And also, we get the great and mighty Ted Raimi turning up in there, and that always makes any film better. Sam Raimi's hey. younger brother. That's Henrietta from Evil Dead 2 for you guys who don't know. Oh, hell yeah. Um, uh, so my, my third and final, uh, except for the 10th one that we're all going to do together, is um, Demons, Lamberto Bava, 1985. Um, it's about uh, a, a couple of college girls who take the day off of school. They just kind of play hooky, do a Ferris Bueller day, and decide they're going to go to a movie. Uh, they get free tickets. They go to the flick. Um, it's a horror movie about a, a mask that when you put it on, it possesses you, turns you into a demon. 
Um, and unfortunately, for some strange reason, there's a motorcycle in the prop department of the movie <laughs> theater, and also a replica of the mask that's in the movie. So, and someone, one of the cast members, puts it on, becomes possessed, it spreads. It becomes Dawn of the Dead in a movie theater. It's fucking awesome. It's gory. I only it's recently it. watched it and I loved it. Oh, you did watch it? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, good metal score. Some Iron Maiden in there again. Um, great photography. Tons of gore. Lots of fun. Let's check it out. There's no reason for you not. If you're a gore hound, there's no reason for you not to watch it. If you're not, why? <laughs> um, demons. All right. It's, it's the last great Grindhouse movie that got a wide release, I think. Yes. Okay. So my third pick is uh, Nina Forever. Um, Nina Forever is a, a love story that is very passionate at, at times until um, the ex-girlfriend tears her way through the bed. You're having sex with your new girlfriend on and decides she wants to join in. And yes, she's all bloody and dead and flops around like a corpse. <laughs> that was number two. Believe it or not, that movie was d- resulted in one of our deepest uh, conversations. And yet, <laughs> yep. it's one of those movies that can be summed up with an extremely deep conversation or with uh, that kind of summary. Yeah, he, and he well, you know, up. and the thing is, is it's it's really kind of about uh, relationships and uh, not only with others, but relationships with yourself and being able to digest and let go of things that have happened in your life. Otherwise, the demons come to get you. And uh, that's what happens in, in Nina Forever. But, you know, I'm not even doing any justice to this film. It's just a... But you it, did, quite, you did it, quite a bit of justice in our length, feature-length review. I mean, yeah, our but, review. you know, in, in a short little... Blah, 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 you right. can't really say a whole lot other than what I said, you know, you, you, you get a new girlfriend after your girlfriend dies she, and your old girlfriend decides she does, she's not done with you yet. And she likes your girlfriend. Let's face it. One of the things that we tend to forget in real life is that the end of any relationship, whether it ends dramatically like a car accident or ends kind of like an ongoing dose of cancer still requires a certain amount of mourning to get over that shit. Yes. If you don't allow yourself that, you're not going to. Yep. And sometimes it's really difficult to do that. I sure. haven't done it. You know, I haven't successfully done it in some cases. So I understand it. I, I, I connect with this film in, in some ways. Not many. But some. Okay. You've, never had, you've, you've never had a, an affair with a dead woman. As far as we know. As far as we know. Dave, you're next. <laughs> I'm going to choose Todd and the Book of Pure Evil, which is another series that's running on Shudder. Each episode is roughly about half an hour. Um, Basically, the idea is that it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer. If Buffy was a 16-year-old death metal kid rather than a 16-year-old cheerleader. It's a gore fest. It's total comedy. It feels an awful lot like the uh, Evil Dead films in terms of the gore and the humor. Um, it has the great and mighty Jason Mewes, a.k.a. Jay from Jay and Silent Bob. Also, the guy who plays uh, the guidance counselor for this film is, or the series, is one of the funniest human beings I've ever seen in my life. Totally worth checking out. So if you need to see some serious gore and have a good chuckle, couldn't recommend the series enough. Totally worth checking out. My, my choice, Ranger is a good film. It is a really, really good film. But just to break it up, um, I'm, my other choice, and I had to flip a coin between that, between Todd and the Book of Pure Evil, and I need a laugh lately. Um, and this film doesn't have a lot of laughs, but holy shit, it's a really good film. Exorcist 3. Oh. Um, they brought back Jason Miller. They really did a great job of writing a possession concept. Um, I think William Peter Blatty wrote the script and might have directed it. Um, it's really okay if you're going to sit around uh, okay ranger would be on my list i would follow up on this with no issues but between ranger and exorcist 3 if somebody said dude which do you want to watch i'd pick exorcist 3 just because the tone 
and the shooting and also the moment it has the greatest jump scare moment ever. The greatest jump scare in the history okay. of filmed entertainment. See, okay, I have no <laughs> idea what that could possibly be. <laughs> and I really don't want you to tell me what it is, but I think for that reason alone, because I haven't seen Exorcist 3, yeah. for that reason alone, I may change my pick to Exorcist 3. Okay. Trust me, I, I don't usually, I, I hate jump scares with a passion, but this one, you ever had that moment where, you know, you joke around about, you've had a moment that is so shocking and so painful, you feel it in your hair? I, I want to say. I put this in my hair and my teeth. It's not, only, it's not only a great jump scare, it's, it's an incredible buildup to that jump scare for the like five, five, five straight the- minutes. <laughs> Jeez. All yeah. right. Yeah, I, I think I'll have to change my pick to, to Exorcist okay, 3. Okay, I'll do the same. Exorcist 3. Folks, you know, I think what we're going to do is roll our list. And uh, in rolling that list, there are also I'm going to put up some links for you to click on some other, other videos that we've done. And uh, we sure appreciate it if you'd subscribe and like our videos. And please make comments. We love comments, good or bad, um, positive or negative comments are wonderful it's like food for those who haven't eaten comment on our time. stuff tell us how we're doing tell us what you want to see tell us what you don't want to see yeah. uh, we're still going to do what we want but we we, we like your feedback yeah we'll, we'll yeah. Take care, listen to it we'll chuckle at most of it and then say hey wait a minute in comments tell us a beer we should try yes yes, yes. yes. Uh, <laughs>